Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on the inventory and we're specifically going to be working on the dragging and dropping functionality for moving objects around in the inventory, swapping them with other objects, as well as dropping them out into the world. This won't be too difficult, but we will be using the control system that's built in for dragging and dropping data inside of Godot. This is very handy for any time you're using anything with 2D and you want drag and drop functionality as it's kind of just built into Godot. And once you understand it, it's not hard to use at all. So in order to use this, I've got the control documentation here open. You can find three functions here for the control. The first one is can drop data, then drop data, then get drop data. Now, the way this works is can drop data tells the Godot engine whether you can drop whatever you're dragging onto the control that you're dragging it over currently. And this is by calling a function that returns a Boolean. If it says that it can drop the data onto it, then drop data will actually pass that data to the function on the object you're dropping it on. And then get drag data is called whenever you're actually starting to call, drag a control. In this case, we're going to be passing in a dictionary as well as setting the drag preview, which is just whatever icon we have for the item and the Godot engine will automatically have it follow the mouse as it's dragging. So let's go ahead and dive into the engine and get started. Now there's two scripts we're going to need to change. The first one is going to be the inventory slot GD or CS as well as the inventory handler. Now the inventory slot is going to handle all of the actual dragging and dropping functionality. The inventory handler is going to handle repositioning items, but then the drag and drop functionality on it is going to actually be handling dropping it off of the inventory. So the inventory handler is actually behind all of the inventory slots. It's this full rect here and the inventory slots are down in the grid control. So basically we're going to have a drag and drop function on the inventory handler as well so that when you drag something out of the inventory and drop it into this empty space, we'll actually catch that and go ahead and drop the item out into the actual physical world. So let's get started with the inventory slot. All right, and the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the slot filled inside of a if statement to check to see if slot data does not equal null. And if it is null, then we're going to set slot filled to false. And we're going to set that icon slot texture to null. This is just going to make it so that we can clear out slots by just setting their value to null. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a function for get drag data. This is just going to be called every time we want to start dragging this icon. And first off, we're just going to check to see if the slot is filled. Go ahead and return a dictionary with the type and the ID with type being item and the ID being the slot that we're dragging. Now we do need to go ahead and create a preview. To do this, we're just gonna instantiate a new texture rect and we're gonna set all these options. Now, just going through these options real quick, we're just setting the expand mode to ignore size so the image doesn't affect the size of the icon. Then we're setting the icon size to the icon slot size. So that'll be about 64 by 64. We're gonna set that pivot offset to half that so it's right in the center and we're gonna rotate it by two degrees just to make it a little bit more interesting. And then we're just gonna set the texture equal to the icon slot texture for the image that we're dragging. Now we need to go ahead and call the function set drag preview with that preview texture rec. And if we're not filled, then we're just going to return false. And that'll pretty much handle the get drag data function. Now we need to go ahead and create the can drop data function, which all it's going to do is check to see if the thing we're dragging over this icon is a dictionary. And if the type is item, this is going to make sure that we don't have any cross contamination if we have any other drag and drop functionality for other things. Now we need to also have the drop data, which is just going to emit a signal on item drop. And it's going to be passing off that dictionary's ID. And this is also going to be selecting the mtoy slot ID. So let's go ahead and create that signal for the on item drop, which is going to be on item drop event handler for C sharp. And it's going to take a from slot and a to slot ID, which the from slot is going to be passed in when we drop something onto it. And the to slot is just the ID of the slot that we're dragging it onto. Now the signal is going to be called on the inventory slots, but we need to listen to it from the inventory handler. So when we instantiate the inventory slot, we're actually going to be tying into that signal using the ready function on the inventory handler. And we're going to be keeping track of any time an item needs to move from one slot to another slot. So let's go ahead and dive into the inventory handler and get started on that. So first off, we're going to go ahead and bind to the on item dropped event. And we're going to be connecting it to an on item dropped on slot function, which doesn't exist yet. So we'll go ahead and create that. Now this is going to have a from slot and a to slot. So let's go ahead and get the slot data for each one of those. So we have all of our inventory slots and we'll be passing in the from slot to the index as well as the to slot to the index to get the item that we're dragging to and the item we're dragging from. Now all we have to do to make this work is take the inventory slot we're dragging to and fill it with the inventory item that we're dragging from and vice versa. So this means that if we're dragging 
taking an item from a slot that has an item to a slot that doesn't have an item, it will drag it into that slot and drop it, and then the other slot will just take up the null value of the slot it dragged to. And this will also mean that anytime you drag one item onto another item, it just swaps their positions in the inventory. And that's pretty much it, nothing too complicated. Now we do need to go ahead and ha handle the drag and drop functionality on the inventory handler. So first off, we're just going to use the can drop data function. We're going to use it exactly the same as inventory slot as we're just listening for item drops. And we're going to create a new function for whenever we drop data. And first off, we're going to go ahead and instantiate the item model prefab that's found in the slot data. And we're going to be instantiating it as a node 3D. And before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and fill that slot that we just drug that item out of with null. Next, we're going to get the player body's parent and add the item as a child of it. And we don't have a player body yet, so let's go ahead and get an export for that. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and create a new collision mask, which will allow it to drop out into the world a little bit more dynamically. And we're going to set our new item to a new function, which will return a vector three for get world mouse position. So let's go ahead and create that function. So inside this function, what we're going to do is we're going to raycast out into the world. And if we impact something, we're going to drop the item at that location. And if we don't, we're going to drop the item in just generally the direction of where the mouse cursor is, but in the 3D world out near where the player is. So first off, let's go ahead and get the mouse position. We're going to use the get viewport.get mouse position function. For the camera, we're going to use get viewport.get camera 3D. For the ray start, we're going to take the mouse position. We're going to use the camera and we're going to use the projection ray origin function. And this is just going to get the position in 3D world space where our mouse is on the screen. For the ray end, I'm just going to take the ray start and I'm going to add to it the ray normal, which we're just going to use the project ray normal function, which will get the normal out of the camera at the mouse position. And we're going to multiply it by the distance from the camera to the player body's global position. And we're going to multiply that by two. This is just going to get a position out past the player as far away from the player as the camera is on this side. Next up, we need to go ahead and get the 3D world. For this, we're just gonna use the player body .get world 3D, and we're gonna be using this to raycast out into the world. And we need to get the space state from that, which is just gonna be world 3 direct space state. Now that we have all of that data, we can finally create the query, which is gonna be a physics ray query parameters 3D, and we're gonna use the create function with the start, the end, and the collision mask that we're gonna assign in the editor. And we can get the results from that query, which is just gonna be a dictionary, and we're gonna use the intersect ray function to, on the space state to actually execute that query. And once we have the query, it's actually pretty simple. All we got to do is if the results have a value, that means we did impact something. We're just going to pass out the position plus a vector three multiplied by 0.5 up. So it just kind of bounces the item up a little bit. And then if it's not the case, we're going to go ahead and use the ray start dot ray lerp. We're going to use the ray start dot lerp to ray in. So it's going to lerp between the ray start and the ray in by 50% and give that same little bounce up. This is just going to place it out by where the player is, but underneath where the mouse is. All right, that should be pretty much everything. The only things we're gonna have to set up is the collision mask. We'll just set that to layer one and we'll set the player body to the player body inside of the inspector. Now that should be it. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. All right, so we have these items here and if we pick up a couple and press escape, we can click and drag and it'll reposition the items and we can drag them over other items. If we drag them out into the world, it dr will drop them and that's it. And we can drop them on ourselves. We can go ahead and pick them back up and drop them. And that's it. So that's pretty much all we have to do. It's not super flashy, but it's very important to have for a good inventory is the ability to reorient things, reposition things, and drag them and drop them out into the world. So hopefully that was helpful. Next week, we'll probably go over a couple safeguards like blocks to make sure that you can't pick up more than a certain number of items. Right now, if you pick up too many, then the items you pick up after that will just get deleted and we don't want that. And then maybe after that, we'll go ahead and work on some basic equipping functionality. But for now, this will be all. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.